If you have a Behringer X32 and Ableton Live, did you know that you can use your X32 as an audio interface for Ableton Live? So you can send uh, tracks from Ableton Live to your X32 without having to use an interface. And in return, you could send tracks from your X32 back into Ableton Live to record a multi-track session. Well, in this preview lesson for my brand new using X32 with Ableton Live course, I show you how to use your X32 as an audio interface with Ableton Live so that you can send tracks from live to your X32 with no additional gear and equipment. So take a look. Okay, so let's talk about what I think is the simplest, maybe coolest way. Well, not coolest. I think the next one is coolest. But this is the simplest, um, most straightforward, most inexpensive. Let's put it that way. Uh, way to get audio from Ableton Live into your X32, and that is using a USB cable. What's really cool about this is the X32, as long as you've got the 32-channel USB audio interface X USB card installed in it, which is what comes by default, uh, can function as a audio interface in Ableton Live. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my, there it is, USB cable, plug it into my interface here. The other end is already plugged into my computer. Couple notes about this, just like we talked about previously, this has to be a direct connection from your X, uh, from your USB, from your X32 into your computer. You don't want a USB extender between these. Uh, you don't want like a USB to Ethernet adapter that you buy on Amazon. It'll work great for your computer keyboard, it'll work great for your mouse, but it doesn't work great for audio interfaces because the amount of data that needs to be pushed between them. So we have a direct connection from USB from my interface into my computer. Now, if you're on a newer computer and you have to do an adapter to get there, that's fine too. If you have to do a hub, um, that's okay, but choose a powered hub if at all possible, and most likely you're gonna be fine then. Um, so the downside, the one real downside of the setup uh, is that you need to be in close proximity to each of these. Because of the fact um, we can't use the USB extender, uh, you don't want your X32 at front of house, your tracks computer on stage, and run a super long ethernet cable between them um, uh, using this setup. The next setup we talk about, we can run however long the ethernet cable we want, and that will, want, that will work. But in this particular setup, no USB cables. Okay, so we're connected to our computer. Let's go in Ableton Live. Couple setups uh, and uh, changes we need to make. We're going to do Command Comma to go to our preferences. Uh, Control Comma if you're on a PC. In our preferences uh, window here, we're going to click Audio, and under Audio Output Device, we're going to do X USB. Now I'm sending 32 ins and outs from um, uh, the card here, uh, so I could deal with inputs as well too. But in this case, I'm just going to deal with outputs. Okay. Uh, next, I'm going to do to uh, click on Output Configs to configure my outputs. Uh, I've just got this set up to use both stereo. Give me the option to route both the stereo channels as well as mono channels, and I'm just doing 10 channels here. Uh, you could do all 32 if you wanted to. Um, but I'm just configuring outputs. And since I'm not dealing with inputs, I'm not going to deal with input config here. Sample rate, this is defined by uh, X32 edit. Okay, so if I go into setup, and I go to card. Uh, you could also do this physically on your console as well too. Uh, that is set up here in configuration, 32 ins and 32 outs. Um, um, or excuse me, your sample rate, uh, excuse me, is configured, where is it? M mixer, right here, mixer sample rate. However many channels show up is set by your card here, configuration. You see all the different options here? I would just leave it to 32 in, 32 out. I guess if for some reason you were running into an issue where um, I don't even know the reason this would happen, but if for some reason you were running into an issue to where you were having problems and needed to lower that, maybe your computer couldn't handle all of those inputs, uh, which I've never seen that scenario, never seen a computer that slow that it couldn't handle it. But let's say that was the case. If that were the case, then um, you could disable that there and shorten that. Okay, let's go back to live. Um, let me get out of uh, preferences here. Okay, we'll close that. Take you back into live. Uh, our interface is set up. I guess I should mention, I've mentioned this uh, probably a thousand times before, but I'll really quickly breeze through this. So sample rate, again, is controlled by our uh, X32 on our console itself or using the uh, X32 edit software. Latency is defined by buffer size here. So this is set to 512. Um, this is gonna be fine. Uh, if you're running uh, key stuff, and you're experiencing some latency, you can lower that. But you want to lower it to a level that you still have enough CPU overhead to where it's not going to cause issues on your computer. So I, I would leave it set to 512 unless you have some reason to change it. Okay, so now in live, we're going to route all of our tracks. So I'm going to go to my click track here. I'm going to do external out. Okay, so I'm going to go to my click track here, do external out, and we're going to choose one. 
Okay. And then I'm going to go to my guide track here, external out. We've got two. And then my return tracks, I believe all these, yeah, these are already routed because they were routed in my template. Uh, we've got three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So I am sending 10 channels from Ableton Live to my X32 over a USB cable. Again, they've got to be um, in close proximity to each other. So that's super important. Uh, I don't want to uh, try to do this over an extender. Now let's talk about what we have to do on the X32 side. Now this is going a little deeper than I intended or wanted to go in this course, but I, I think it's important for you to know as a playback engineer, as the person running tracks, as a worship leader, really whoever's running tracks, I think it's important for you to know how this happens on the console in case you get in a situation where the audio engineer you're working with doesn't know how to do this. Um, then uh, you could, again, be in a scenario to where um, uh, you could help educate that audio engineer and show them, oh, here's where to go. This is what you're doing. So uh, we're using our card inputs for this. What I need to do is say, okay, I want a certain set of inputs on my console to come from my card, okay, as opposed to local inputs or stage boxes connected to AES 50 ports. I want them to come from the card input. Okay. What I typically suggest doing is, is throwing them on like a, a fader bank by themselves. So a lot of times I'll use like the highest fader bank here, 25, you know, whatever, all these different channels. I'll, I'll use those so that those are um, uh, together um, uh, when I'm mixing, right? They're side by side all together. So I could go, um, uh, you know, I'm just looking at channels one through 32, but if I'm looking physically at my console, I could say like one through eight or one through 16 based on the size of your console. And when I click that last layer, it's going to be essentially just my tracks. So it doesn't matter where you put this. It could be one through eight. I like making it the highest one. So you have all your other inputs uh, available and open. Okay. Let's talk about how to do this. So I'm going to go to the routing section uh, of my console. You could do this on the front panel. You could do this in the X32 edit software. And we want to go to input. So by default, uh, this has 32 uh, local inputs. Wow, that's kind of impressive. Well, it says 32 local. It's actually 16 local. I don't know what it's talking about. Uh, but it, it's, it says it's got 32 uh, possible inputs. Um, again, I don't know where these X or 16 local inputs are coming from, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, but I have the option to say, okay, I want these inputs to be local, to be AES 50 A or B, uh, or card. Okay. And there's some other options here, user or something, who knows, user in, who knows what, what that is, but I want to use my card inputs. Okay. So let's think about this. What am I routing from Ableton live? Which, which row, which set of outputs am I routing? So I'm doing, um, one through 10 here. Okay. So I actually did more than eight. Um, but that's, that's fine. So I may have to do a couple fader banks here. That's why I, I try to keep this. I guess if you keep this to eight outputs, that's going to be the cleanest, but you know, whatever you live and you learn. So card, uh, one through eight, and then, uh, I'm going to have to enable nine through 16 to get those extra, uh, nine through 10. Okay. So let's go to uh, source here. And let's say uh, channel one through eight, let's leave that the way it is, 17 through 24. We're going to go ahead and pick off and say, okay, I want uh, one through eight to be 17 through 24. And I want uh, channels 25 through 32 on the console to be nine through 16. Okay, so those are uh, set to be card inputs. Now for the ones that are stereo, uh, again, I shouldn't talk about this because this is beyond the scope of this. Uh, but, uh, what I should do is go in here and, and rename these. Okay. So 25, let's see, what do we actually start with? Make sure I'm doing this right. 17. Okay. So we're starting with 17. Let's go to channel 17 here. Worst part of the software to me is I can never remember where to click to actually select it. There we go. Okay. So right now it's labeled Vox two. That is not correct. So we're going to go to configure, I think, or we'll go to channel maybe, uh, or we'll go here. Nope. That's not it. I told you this is why it's on an X32 course somewhere on this godforsaken uh, console, we rename inputs. Maybe this is it. Hey, there we go. Okay. So figure it out in your console. This is uh, not an X32 course, but I'm going to relabel these. Click. Okay. We'll go to this one, uh, which says talk back now. And this is going to be guide. So I'm right clicking in X32 edit. So I've discovered this. Um, I don't know what this loop section is, but we'll call it uh, loops one. Uh, let's call it loops three, four. Let's say three dash four. We'll do this loops five dash six. Hopefully I would have a better naming convention for this, but you know, whatever it works. Uh, loops. We had five, let's do seven, eight. And then loops nine, 10. It's one other thing I want to show you here. And then, um, then we're done with this loops nine through 10. Okay. So the other thing I want to show you, these are actually stereo channels. 
Um, actually, I did this wrong because of the way this is labeled. Let's see if this picks up. Um, again, this is why this is not an X32 course. I'm going to go to this channel itself and I want to link it. I believe that's the terminology that the X32 uses. There we go. Channel input stereo link. So uh, I want to link channels 19 and 20 because that's this is channel one, this is channel two, this is three and four from my tracks. So 19 and 20 are, are now linked. So again, this is why this is uh, not an X32 course. We'll call this loop th uh, loops three. Let's re rename it now. All that work for nothing. Loops three. We'll call this one loops four. Okay. Uh, now we're going to do a stereo uh, pair here. Okay. Stereo link rather. And we'll re relabel this one loops seven. Loops eight. Again, I mean, this has nothing to do with Ableton Live, but it's, it's probably worth knowing how to do. Like, so you could show up and make an audio engineer's life easier, you know, like let them figure it out for themselves and don't be a jerk about it but um, you could help them if they can't figure that out. Uh, if the show, uh, if the whole show is going to crash unless you're willing to speak up and solve it, then solve it then. Uh, speak up at that point and solve it. Otherwise, just let them try a couple times. Okay, so let's turn up faders here. Uh, now what's cool about this with our card input setup, let's go back to our song here. I've got a preset section to loop. Uh, and you can see we're, we're metering there and we have uh, input to our console. So let's talk about this. This is, um, I don't want you to miss the uh, in, incredible uh, uh, power of what just happened. So I'm looking at my console. This 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 console itself has 16 physical inputs on it. I have not plugged into any of those 16 physical inputs. So all 16 of my physical inputs connections on my console are open. Um, I use a USB cable to send uh, 10 channels of audio from Ableton Live into my console. And so I'm currently using, uh, again, let's see, channels uh, 17 through 26 on my console, it looks like is what I'm using um, in order to send audio into Ableton Live or from Ableton Live into the X32. But all my other inputs are open. So if you really think about this, imagine being a smaller band, being a solo artist, traveling, wanting to have uh, uh, tracks that you travel with, wanting to have an in-ear system that you travel with, wanting to have a soundboard that has audio effects and things built into it that you can use. You could do all of that with the X32, automate it with Ableton Live, which we'll talk about in a moment, but send audio into it over USB. Um, and there's tons and tons of power there. So this is great. It only works in close proximity. What do we do when this is over a long distance and they're separated? We'll talk about that next. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that preview from our Using X32 with Ableton Live course. In that course, I show you how to connect uh, Ableton Live to your X32 to send audio back and forth, how to send MIDI back and forth, how to control your X32 with Ableton Live, as well as how to control Ableton Live with your X32. If you have a console, an X32 console and Ableton Live, you need to check out this course. In order to get access to that, you can click the link in the description in this video. I've got a couple preview lessons available that you can watch now. If you want to get access to the full course, you've got to subscribe and become a From Studio to Stage student. You could go to fromstudiotostage.com slash subscribe to get access to that course, plus everything else we have on the site. All the other courses, 24-7 on-demand access, uh, 200 credits in your account every single month that you can purchase content from the shop, a monthly call uh, with me where you can ask me any question you have about a to live or connecting with the gear you have on stage, as well as a private exclusive community just for from studio to, to stage students, plus some extra stuff that I can't talk about in this video. But to get access to all of that, again, you've got to head to from studio to stage.com slash subscribe. Now, if you're not ready to become a student quite yet, I post content like this every single day, 10 a.m. Central on the channel. That's right. Every single day. I don't sleep. All I do is record video for you. Uh, to get access to that, make sure you hit subscribe to the YouTube channel here and hit the bell icon so that when I post new content, you can check out the title, see if it sounds like something you're interested in. And if so, you can watch the tutorial. Thanks so much for watching this one. We'll see you on the next one. Take care, everybody. Bye.